this is what happens when you quarantine, what is it, COVID-19? COVID-19. Yeah. And if you need a, if you're, if you're a kid, if your barber not eight years old and he ain't focused like this, you need to get another one. He's taking appointments after the governor says you can, you know, get your hair cut. Until next time, peace out. Police in a big investigation tonight here in the 8300 block of Northwest 90th Street, a home with crime scene tape now all around it. This all started as a welfare check this morning, just before 10 o'clock. Police discovered three bodies inside the home. Police say it's clear there is some sort of trauma to the victims, but detectives are still trying to figure out what, if any type of weapon was used and if there was a motive in this case. This is a newer section of neighborhood with homes still being built and neighbors say the family lived here for about a year. The neighborhoods, it's a new neighborhood, super nice people, super quiet neighborhood, um, yeah, so it's a shock. A very tough scene in this neighborhood. Police do say they are not actively looking for a suspect right now as they still try to figure out the exact details of this case. For one family in Kansas City, Missouri, life seemed picture perfect from the outside looking in. You have a beautiful couple, well-educated, exceptional son, nice home, nice cars, world travel, and the list could go on and on. It truly seemed that anything the Megichi family set out to achieve, they were able to accomplish plus more. Over the years, the husband and wife duo, plus their only son, focused on making an impact in their communities and showing that anything is possible with hard work and dedication. The couple seemed to be very responsible, plus dependable, and also passed that trait on to their son as well. So on April 1st, 2024, when one of the McGeechees did not show up to work and the son did not show up to school, it was quickly determined that was completely out of character and something was seriously wrong. 38-year-old Dominique Antoinette McGeechee was born December 10, 1985 in Topeka, Kansas. She was raised by a single mother, and eventually her mother married a sergeant in the U.S. Army who was stationed in Fort Riley, Kansas. Dominique's stepfather took to her as if she was his own and was part of the region she would end up joining the Army as an adult. During her general school studies, Dominique played basketball and ran track. In turn, she earned a scholarship to the University of Kentucky, and throughout that time of her studies, Dominique became a part of the Zeta Phi Beta sorority. After completing her higher education is when she would become a part of the U.S. Army. Dominique came a captain in the Army and served in Iraq as well. She was also a nurse practitioner specializing in adult geriatrics as a traveling nurse. Around 2009, Dominique began a relationship with Jarrell Magici, a masonry member of the oldest and largest goodwill fraternity in the world. The pair who were living in North Carolina at the time seemed to complement each other well, and in August 2011, they welcomed their one and only son, Jarrell D. McGeechee Jr. Not too long after giving birth, Jarrell Sr. proposed in front of 3,000 people at a Masonic ball in 2011. Dominique said yes, and it seemed to be a beautiful moment. When their son was around 11 months old on July 28, 2012, they married in front of 300 people in North Carolina. Early in their marriage, Dominique was serving her country in the Army, and Jarrell was a stay-at-home dad for Junior's first three years of life, according to him. He would often post to his social media the joys of being a father and said it was the best job ever and priceless. During those early years of Junior's life, his father was grooming him to be something great in the future. Over the course of Senior being a masonry, he would become a worshipful master and president of the lodge and had dreams of his son following in his footsteps one day. On Jarrell Senior and Dominique's first wedding anniversary, he gifted her a GL 550 Benz and throughout the years of their marriage seemed to dote on her. However, for both of them, their greatest achievement was their son, who was destined to be a future leader. Junior started to excel early in life and was truly wise beyond his years. He was a bookworm, and by the second grade, he was the top reader in the grade. He also won first place in the spelling bee as well in the second grade. By the time he was in third grade, he was winning multiple awards at school. The three in particular that stood out more than anything, one was the Brilliant Behavior Award, 
another A honor roll for the entire school year, and third, the only male in his third grade class to receive the Christian Character Award. Junior, at such a young age, said hard work and treating people right really pays off. This young man was truly gifted, and anything he put his time into, he was exceptional at. According to Junior, he liked to read, experiment with science, loved wearing bow ties, and eating pickled pig feet and fried bologna. To mention all of his accomplishments, though, would take hours. To sum it up, he was a 4.0 student all the time. He placed number one multiple times in spelling bees. And after all his high levels of success, he basically got tested and was a genius. In June 2023, the family posted to Facebook, Good morning, family. I am now a seventh grader and officially a middle school scholar. I recently took the Scholastic Aptitude Test and the first time at age 11 and scored a 1170. Also took a mandated state examination scoring 341 out of 380, in which only 25 students in the country scored at this level or higher out of some 40,000 students enrolled. For the third consecutive year, administrators have asked my parents about moving me forward one grade. However, my father said to me, you will know when it's your time. I'm saying this because I am reminded of King David in the book of Psalms when he said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. To my fellow scholars, wait, your time is near. Also, back in 2018, he became a part of the Knights of Pythagoras, which is a community-based mentor organization for young men between the ages of 7 and 20, which provides programs aiming to interest and aid in members in their growth and development. Junior had a desire to either be a surgeon, attorney general, or astronaut one day, and was truly well on his way. After his father, Jarrell Sr., was a stay-at-home dad in Junior's younger years, he became a police officer in North Carolina serving his community. The family moved to Kansas City sometime between 2022 and 2023, and Junior stayed on his path to excellence. In 2020, Junior would travel and give his rendition of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s I've Been to the Mountaintop, April 3, 1968 speech. All we say to America is be true to what you said on paper. If I lived in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country, maybe I can understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I Junior continued to give that speech over the years going forward. In January 2024, Jarrell Jr. again recited the King speech at an event in Wichita, Kansas, where he commanded the room as he delivered a performance of King's final speech from 1968. The family truly seemed to have it together, not a perfect life because no one's life can be that, but theirs seemed to be not far off. However, that was far from the truth and there were some storms brewing behind the scene. It looks as if, allegedly, Singer may have been pushing his son too hard to be great and not allowing him to be a child, being he was only 12, and his mother did not agree with that. On April 1st at 4.29 a.m., Singer made a Facebook post, but posted it as if Junior wrote it, and it said, My parents has always been great to me. However, when they had differences, I always suffered. The worst thing ever is when my mom took me from my dad. My dad only disciplined me for my actions. My mom could not respect that because she never had a male figure in her life prior to meeting my dad. Weeks without seeing my dad as he was a stay-at-home father to me for the first three years of my life. That hurt me more than life. Now this post was the catalyst to what was to come and Senior allegedly had devised a plan to change things forever. On Monday, April 1st, 2024, a welfare check was carried out at the McGeechee home after one of them did not show up to work. Also, Junior did not show up to school, and that was completely out of the ordinary. When authorities arrived at the home, located in the 8300 block of Northwest 90th Street, a newer subdivision, 
Officers would enter the family home and they would find three bodies inside. Tragically, all of them were unalived and it was determined that the three people found were Dominique McGeechee, 38, Jarrell D. McGeechee Jr., 12, and Jarrell D. McGeechee Sr., 38, all apparently shot, and it was also determined that Jarrell Sr. had a self-inflicted gunshot wound. So it sadly appears that Sr. took the life of his wife and son before himself. Tonight, we're learning more about the mother and son found in their home yesterday. Police now say Gerald McGeechee Sr his family before taking his own life. Investigative reporter Matt Fleener is working to get answers on the victims. Dr. King said they can brave the storm and so can I. This is 12-year-old Jarrell McGeechee Jr. in January giving a speech to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Wichita ABC affiliate Cake TV speaking with him then as he honored Dr. King's legacy. His commitment to being nonviolent because there are so many things so many racist acts are being performed. Monday, police found the young boy inside his home with his mother, Dominique. Police say her husband, Jarrell's father, shot them, then turned the gun on himself. They were just really, really good people. I'm sorry. A former co-worker of the couple at the Eastern Kansas VA in Leavenworth questions why she came to pay her respects at the home Tuesday. Her husband, who works at the VA, capturing an image and a video of Jarrell Jr. at the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum last September. May cause the whole citizenry of Birmingham to change from negative extremes. Jarrell displaying his historical knowledge. I just noted how brilliant he was. Um, he was big on history. Chris Ware also met the McGeechees, inviting Jarrell Jr. to speak in Topeka at three separate events, paying tribute to Dr. King and black history. I remember the confidence that he spoke with and that just, it, it inspired me. Ware saying we lost one of our future leaders as the community mourns. This goes to show that what looks good on the outside may be rotten on the inside. His actions were completely selfish and it was his way to control the narrative. I personally believe that. There is no way Dominique and her son should still not be here. Every kid is special that the Lord brings into the world. But as the scripture says in Matthew 22, 14, for many are called, but few are chosen. Little Jarrell was definitely chosen. My deepest thoughts and prayers are with all that Dominique and Junior touched. Such a horrible shame and unimaginable loss. Let me know your thoughts on this situation. Also, please don't forget to comment your prayers for all the loved ones grieving in this difficult time and hit that like button and share to make your people aware. And as always, remember to stay woke. Things change quickly.